The Cube presents HPE Discover 2022. Brought to you by HPE. Hi everybody, welcome back to day three, the Cube's continuous coverage, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of HPE Discover 2022. My name is Dave Vellante, I'm here with John Furrier. Dave McGraw is here, he's the Vice President in the Office of the CTO at VMware, and he's joined by Scott Wiest, the Vice President and CTO of Global Sales for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And we're going to talk tech, we're going to talk integration, co-creation. Gents, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so Scott, much. Let me, let me ask you a question on the Scott side on the HP. We had the sales executives on the leaders on the sales side, you're on the CTO side with customers. You're on the front lines with customers. GreenLake's got traction, they got 1,600 plus customers, 70 services we heard, and it's just the beginning. When you're out in front of customers, you've got the old HPE, now the new HPE kind of developing, what are they talking to you guys about? Because now you have this cloud layer, I call it cloud operations, architecture shift. What yep. is the main conversation that you're involved in? I think it's driven by fundamentally that customers want to consume differently, right? They are workloads that are ever evolving. You guys have evolved to meet those. And since their consumption methods have changed on how they want, and right, a lot of it's agility and and speed of business, right, is, is dramatically shifted. So I think you'll see HPE GreenLake, you know, obviously as the cloud that comes to you, try to meet the problem where the cloud experience is needed. And I think that's the fundamental shift we've seen. I spent a lot of time with customers here at this conference and as we've moved from cloud first to cloud smart to cloud everywhere, we're sitting in the intersection of cloud ever and delivering the experience together. And I think that's the heart of most of the conversations that are going on. Well, VMware, you guys are on, on a cloud. You guys shifted up with the cloud play. That's accelerated the VMware proposition. Now we have yesterday, I, we were talking to the say the storage folks. They're provisioning single pane, pane of glass for storage to customers. And whether they want to pipe it to S3 or develop at the edge, doesn't matter. It's one console. Yeah. yeah. That's brand new. That's shipping. Yeah, and you know, a lot of it's driven too. I think the days of trap silos of resources that support one line of business are over. So we're talking about cloud agility everywhere, right? And to be able to embrace the cloud in all the locations, right? And you kind of see folks move beyond just like there's the cloud. It's everywhere is the cloud. And so things like storage and fundamental compute and fundamental network operations that we're working on together, I think are where the customers expect us to be. We no longer can just show up. We have to show up and solve. And solve before their needs. And I think that's a unique shift in the experience that's going on. So when you go back to you know, Antonio, what was it, four years ago now, said, okay, we're all in yeah. on as a service. And so when you do that, you say, okay, we're gonna, we have services that are going to help do that. We have financial models that we can take to market immediately, so let's start there. And I would imagine, take, so take us back, that's the point at which you, know, you, you're, you got email, phone ring, whatever. Let's integrate from an engineering standpoint, go. Yeah. You know, as fast as you can. So, what did that mean in terms of an engineer, from an engineering perspective between HPE and, and VMware? Take us through that progression. Yeah, no, thanks for the question. And you're spot on. It started with flexible financing models around metered usage. That was sort of the need at the time to now the expectation of engineered integrated solutions where customers don't want to be in the system integration business anymore. And that requires engineering, right? It requires deep innovation partnership to evolve to where the customer's headed like before they've thought about it. And you'll see you know, what we've done with vCloud Foundation together and the integration within the HP GreenLake ecosystem, what we're doing with unified hybrid cloud views of what's going on, I think requires deep innovation. Things we're doing with other projects that we're going to talk about today like Monterey, Capitola, Thunder, are deep integrative innovation projects where we've got together to try to solve a big problem cross industry that our customers are expecting us to do. And I think that speaks to the spirit of our long partnership together too. It's a business partnership, of course. It's a customer partnership to solve, but it's an innovation partnership. I got I to ask about the um, hybrid. Obviously hybrid's a steady state. We're all seeing yeah. that now. Multi-cloud's being kicked around, but it's not multi-cloud in the sense of workload portability so much. It's more of hybrid stitched together, um, but it's coming fast with a data plane and yeah. data fabric and control planes. Uh, VMware, you guys are talking heavy about cross-cloud or multi-cloud. So this is now, brings up the old school interoperability question, right? So GreenLake sits here on premise, you guys have the edge, you got public cloud all together. Where's the cross-cloud come in? What are customers doing when they think about cross-cloud or, or multi-cloud? What is that conversation? Is it, hey, I got Azure because I got Office and Teams, and I got Amazon over here, and I got my on-premise edge. 
are they moving towards just being agnostic on cloud or is, what's the environment? What, what are you crossing in the cloud? What does that mean, crossing yeah. cloud? I mean, from, from our perspective at VMware, on-premises, it's VMware Cloud Foundation, having that available, it's a VMware Cloud instance, full SDD, SDDC stack. Uh, that is interoperable with our VMware Cloud instances at the hyperscalers. And so for us, it's really about putting the management and control planes around that so that customers can easily determine where they want to place workloads. And when they need to burst, they need to scale up, scale down, they have the flexibility. And we want to make sure all of these capabilities are available with HPE going forward. What's interesting is that, you know, with, with GreenLake, what I like about what I'm seeing is, is that um, the leveling up of the cloud operation model, it's always been DevOps, we've always saw DevSecOps clearly being operationally with cloud. Now on-premise and edge with public cloud, it's full end-to-end -end operational cloud, if you want to call it that. But what is a key technical issue the customers need to do to get that in place? Is it to be DevOps? Is it to have cloud native applications? Um, what kind of managed services? What's the makeup of that operating model for cloud look like? Yeah, I think if you talk to any enterprise commercial account, a top account, they'll, they'll, if you, they think about how they run their functions, right? And you, got, and you spoke to one of them, you have IT ops at the bottom, it's a layer cake, right? You have IT ops, everybody's deeply looking for AI ops that can remediate and orchestrate, and you guys are on that journey as we are. As you move up to DevOps and DevSecOps, because security's critical, you got financial ops, because we know economic value matters, all the way clear up to cloud ops and ML ops. What we're talking about is building a hybrid operating model. Because hybrid IT is simplified IT, we're out of the stack, we're doing that together as partners. And hybrid cloud is multiple consumption methods, but an operating model is encompassing cyber resiliency, compliance, economic, operational control. That's what we're built. And edge is in there as well, right? Folks, is, and it's not OT and IT touching, that's happening too, as we build edge stacks. But folks need a simplified way. And as you saw in a lot of announcements here, our job was to bridge the cloud locations, right? So the customer didn't have to. Back to the portability statement you made. We announced a lot here that will allow you to float back and forth. So you have choice, choice and control. Control is, the, is what every customer wants. They want the right workload at the right place, at the right time, at the right economic, with the right capability. So I think that's in our mission together, right? So. And a big part of engineering obviously is, is futures and roadmap. Yeah. Scott, you mentioned Monterey, Capitola, yeah. Thunder. You know, Monterey's kind of the smart Nick. Uh, one of the mega trends in the industry is silicon diversity that yeah. handled all these new workloads yeah. to help with the edge. Y you know, Capitol is like the vSAN of memory as I, I would describe yeah. it. Yeah. Thunder obviously fits in there as well. So talk a little bit about the engineering roadmap, whatever you can share with us and how you guys are working together on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean those are three key projects for mm -hmm. us. So there's constant interaction and integration with the HPE engineering team and the VMware team to make sure we bring those solutions to market with full capability. And for us, ultimately, it's taking that technology and having it available in a VMware cloud context so that customers can have a, a consistent experience on premises, running VMware cloud, running with HPE GreenLake, and then to our various VMware cloud suppliers around the world. And it's not just the hyperscalers, right? There's thousands of VMware cloud uh, you know, partners that we work with, managed service providers across the board. So it's, it's a very significant network of cloud and you know, being consistent allows for mobility of workloads, allows for consistency and skill sets for IT operators mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I want to get into that um, managed service trend around skill sets, but yeah. I have a, the number one thing that we've got in our, my notes here on multi-cloud challenges, and I want to get your reaction to it real quick. Inconsistent infrastructure, API, database, network, and security constructs are different by cloud. How do you guys view that? And when you go to customers and they say, well, I got APIs that are different, I got different security constructs, what do I do? What is that? Well, how do you answer that, 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 that objection? Well, it's, it's a great call out because it is still the ongoing challenge, right? To get to some of the portability, some of unified model on how they treat resources and consumption, right? And so we're, we've all gotten together as an industry. You'll see purposely that the hyperscalers are all here at, at the conference, right? We're working on deep integration with all of our partners to make sure the customer doesn't have to. And I think it does extend to d the different security models are troubling for customers. We're all working hard on unified security models as well. It's not just the developer saying, I like this set of APIs anymore, right? Or this framework. Customers need to run tier zero, tier one, tier three applications when it really comes down to it. And we need to create that unified model together. So and I think that's really what the 
the spirit or the embodiment of hybrid really is, when you talk to any customer who's running a big operation, they're running in that model, right? They're not just doing cool. They want operational simplicity. And I think you'll see these, these things we're engineering together are going after some of the hard problems. Applications are hungrier all the time. Customers need more and more resources. And I think we would all agree, we've spent a lot of time in industry together, when we're all working on sort of systems of record, what I call the shift right effect is happening. Now we're in systems of interaction and systems of engagement out at the edge. That's the creation point of data. We need to be able to have that unified model all the way through the data path for the customer so they can monetize business value. And the data model is coming together That's right. for all three of those types of work. That's right. Two iconic names, and the other thing is that they're trusted names. And you're right, you're solving some of those hard problems, making it simpler, but also, you, people trust that if something goes wrong, you're going to be able to recover. So yeah, and I'll, and I'll tell you, on the security front, you know, we've worked closely together here. If you look at you know, VMware's strategy of intrinsic security, it's really around going back to the development of our products, making sure there's a secure bill of materials, okay. working with these guys on root of trust, Right, making sure there's a full stack uh, solution for our customers ultimately. That's a whole nother yeah. cube segment. S-bombs yeah. and shipping yeah. left and supply chain. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Ever yeah. shifting yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys shipping are right, right. shipping Excellent. left, we're shipping right. Guys, awesome story, congrats on the collaboration. I really appreciate your time on theCUBE. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much. All right. All right, you're very welcome. It. Okay, John and I will be back right after this short break. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of HPE Discover 2022 from Las Vegas. Be right back. <laughs>